It's a mad, 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 mad world. And the media is driving that madness even further. Let's start with the queen of driving madness in media, Joy Reid. The MSNBC TV personality this week used her platform to warn black Americans and white people who still apologize for slavery about the dangers of conservative policies. We begin tonight with Florida, which I would argue, even with Texas existing, has emerged as the modern state in this country that comes the closest to a modern day version of Jim Crow. Now just hear me out. Well, this isn't a isolated incident for Joyless Reed either. She happens to have a history of radical extremist remarks. The world is paying attention because this is happening in Europe. If this was happening anywhere else, would we see the same outpouring of support and compassion? But we don't need to ask ourselves if the international response would be the same if Russia unleashed their horror on a country that wasn't white and largely Christian. Whiteness has power. So people who don't, who want to decouple whiteness from power, that's what you're annoyed by. Why not the same media attention when people of color go missing? Well, the answer actually has a name. Missing white woman syndrome. If somehow they manage to stumble into the Supreme Court, do any of you guys trust Uncle Clarence? Just nonstop racism. Uh, let's bring in the president of Accuracy and Media, Adam Gallette, to weigh in on this. Adam, uh, thank you for joining us. Joy Reid telling our viewers Florida doesn't want black, brown, or poor people to vote because they're not going to vote for Republicans. Actually, quite the opposite. We're seeing more minority voters and those impacted by inflation actually running away from the Democratic Party. Even here in New York, uh, where Lee Zeldin is poaching off uh, a number of Hispanic and black voters. He's now in the lead uh, in the governor's race here in New York. Uh, what's your takeaway from uh, Joy, Joy Reid this week? Well, get PolitiFact on the phone because talk about misinformation. Both Texas and Florida are in the top five states for black migration within America. So why doesn't Joy Reid go and interview some of the many black Americans that are moving to Florida each week, moving to Texas each week, and escaping progressive states? It is embarrassing for her that she sees everybody through a prism of race, but it's even more embarrassing that she has the facts so patently wrong. Yeah, many people uh, feel Joy Reid's show is propaganda. Um, I don't think too many people would argue with that. But let's talk about another TV show that appears to be nothing more than a liberal mouthpiece. Saturday Night Live, uh, as of late, uh, Donald Trump took to Truth Social to blast the outdated sketch show, saying this, SNL was once good, never great, but now, like the late night losers who have lost their audience but have no idea why, it is over SNL, calling it a great thing, for America. What do you think of uh, the former president's take on SNL? I mean, I think people have been predicting the end of Saturday Night Live about as long as Saturday Night Live has been on the air. To Trump's credit, when he went on in 2015, they had incredibly high ratings. That being said, the Alec Baldwin impressions of Trump had higher ratings than Trump did. I don't know if it says that people prefer impressions of Trump to the actual real thing, but I don't believe that SNL is going anywhere anytime soon. That being said as well, of course, how about making fun of the left now and then? It gets boring when they only make fun of one side and fight with one hand behind their back in terms of humor. Yeah. Adam, are you a Swifty? <laughs> I have no use for Taylor Swift. <laughs> well, Taylor Swift uh, released her new album this week, uh, as you can expect, uh, cause controversy and uh, people losing their minds, as always. Something that has everyone talking about uh, is the singer-songwriter's head turning decision to cast a female to male transgender person as her love interest in this upcoming music video fighting for transgender people to have the same rights as every other american is one thing but uh, should biological women be cast as men in movies now it seems like the political left is pushing biological women to compete in men's sports. We've been talking about that tonight. Uh, we're seeing cross-dressing people in children's cartoons. I mean, this is really kind of uh, taken over our society. And, and, and now Taylor Swift's latest music video, apparently. She just bores me so much. Taylor Swift is not an edgy musician. She's a corporate brand. Being a Swifty must be like being a fan of Procter & Gamble or Berkshire Hathaway. I feel like she uses focus groups to pick the lyrics for her songs. She's carefully choreographed with every move she does. I like musicians and bands that are edgy, that push boundaries, that challenge the status quo, that challenge authority. And all she does is go along with whatever progressive authority wants to be pushed that week. It is boring. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I don't think 
uh, it's one thing for adults to to go to a, a, a drag brunch or whatever, but Taylor Swift's music it's it's marketed towards children. You know, at the end of the day, and, and that's who's really being affected by it. Uh, Adam. Let's talk about this. America's Duchess of Victimhood, Meghan Markle. Uh, she got a lot of attention this week for revealing on her podcast that she quit her job as a briefcase girl on Deal or No Deal 15 years ago because she felt objectified and treated like a quote bimbo. Um, you know, Adam, call me crazy, but I think when you sign up to be the briefcase girl on Deal or No Deal, don't you know what you're getting into? Did she think she was going to be teaching organic chemistry or giving us deep thoughts in Middle East peace? She was hired to smile and open a briefcase. I would love to live in a world in which somebody paid me to smile and open a briefcase. But imagine the, ga the gall of getting hired and paid well for such a simple task and then complaining about it. I think that speaks to how miserable progressives are. They are the least happy people out there. Yeah, it's hard. I, I can't think of a more privileged person than Meghan Markle, who goes from a briefcase girl on Deal or No Deal to princess, world-renowned fame, all of the money she could ever ask for. Unbelievable. It's a Adam, yeah, it really is. Adam, thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you for having me.